Morning. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm yeah. here with Brian, but I don't see him. I saw Brian for a second. I hope he's going to be back. <clears throat> it's his first time on Zoom. Right. Oh. Uh, and uh, we had a chat yesterday. Um, Brian goes way, way back, uh, Course in Miracles classes with me, maybe, I don't know, it could have been as much as 20 years ago. Wow. <laughs> so it was a real surprise to chat with him yesterday and give him, and there he is again, connecting to the so audio. You're, you're coming in and out, Lynn. I am. I'm, I, you're fine to me. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, sounds good. Fine to me. Well, is it fine? All right. Fine, yeah. Do you need more volume? Is that what Orisa is saying? No, she's saying it's fine. <laughs> okay. No, that's what happens when you go go try to go to a class and you know you're going to play golf afterwards. You don't want to hear <laughs> what they're saying in the class at all. <laughs> I think we, yeah, maybe it is me. <laughs> Lynn was telling us about Brian, about you, Brian. Yeah, Brian, uh, you want to introduce yourself, Brian, here for the first time, and the first time on Zoom, and you made it. Hi, Brian. Yes. Hi. Can you hear you me? You are? Yes. Yes. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. We hear you just fine. Oh, yeah, thanks. Okay. <laughs> thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, so Brian is here and new for the first time, and then uh, Patty, is this your first time here? She's on mute. Yeah, I'm Brian's girlfriend. I came with Brian. Oh, wonderful. Hi. Wonderful. How <laughs> nice. Great to have you here as well. Where do you uh, have, Thank have, you. Yeah, have you been on Zoom before? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, a, okay. I'm a psychotherapist. So I do it all the time. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. All right. Where are you located, Patty? Boulder. Where? Boulder. Boulder, Colorado. Okay, okay. Right. Brian is Boulder, Colorado also, and Angela up there waving is Boulder, Colorado. Wow, got a Boulder group here. Huh? We sure do, we sure do. Well, um, this morning we are going to be looking at review number five, which I think is one of the most um, beautiful and intimate uh, discussions in the course where Jesus is, is, is really, um, you know, sharing his, his heart and, and uh, asking, asking us to um, be with him, to believe with him. So I wanted to start out with the, the idea of belief. Um, you understand that we, we are in A Course of Miracles completely changing our belief system. This is, this is a tall order to change one's belief system. Uh, of course, we know the ego's belief sy system is one of uh, separation, specialness, um, underlying all of that is the belief in sin and guilt and the fear that comes of believing that we're guilty and um, making the shift to a um, thought system that is based upon unity, uh, the experience of holiness and innocence. And as long as um, our faith and belief is in separation and specialness, um, that we're all different, we're, we all are unique, we all have separate needs and wants, <laughs> and um, that you can threaten me in any way, as in you could take my peace away from me, um, which is it, it really a part of the ego thought system, which is one or the other, um, that um, 
you you have what I don't, or I have what you don't, and always trying to equalize the score. Uh, as long as our belief in is in that, we we really can never experience who we truly are. We can't experience our our union and our oneness, which is our natural state. And uh, there are a couple of places where Jesus speaks to belief. Uh, and I wanted to point those out as a, a, a background before we actually move into review number five. Um, one of the early on places he talks about it is in lesson 41. So if you would like to go there, uh, lesson 41 is on page 64 in the workbook. So that's pretty early. We're only on, you know, this uh, 41st lesson. And I'm on the last part of it, page 64. Paragraph eight. It's quite possible to reach God. In fact, it is very easy because it is the most natural thing in the world. What makes it natural is we don't have to do anything. That it is what is. So we don't have to make an effort to reach God. And as long-term students of the course know, most of the course is about undoing our interference. The main interference, again, being our separated identity and our specialness and our sin, guilt, and fear that are deeply buried in the mind. We're unaware of those. That's known as the secret dream. The secret dream is sin, guilt, and fear. And it plays out in a world of um, the world we see, the perceptual world, the world that isn't real, including all of these um, separated bodies. So it's natural to reach God when we let go of all of our resistance and defensiveness and protection about what we think we really are. You might even say it's the only natural thing in the world. The way will open if, and it's a big if, if you believe it's possible. Now the review lesson that we're in the goal is at the end of doing these 10 lessons, which is a repetition of uh, God is but love and therefore so am I. The idea being we cannot be outside of the mind of God. It's an impossibility. The belief that we are outside of the mind is the, the dream that we're having, the dream of separation. So, um, Believing that it is possible to reach God is the shift we need to make. Um, and um, we, we will be talking about that quite extensively. Uh, if, you, if you step down to paragraph nine, um, again, the lesson is God goes with me wherever I go. And all of, all of that, what we're reading here is referring to that lesson. God goes with me wherever I go. And he says in paragraph nine, think of what you are saying. What the words mean. If God goes with me wherever I go, what, what does that actually mean for you? for me, for everyone. Concentrate 
on the holiness that they imply about you. On the unfailing companionship that is yours. If God goes with me wherever I go, then God is always with me. I cannot be apart from him. And if God is but love, and therefore so am I, it's impossible for me to be anything but love, loving and lovable. Jesus says, this is how you have to learn to think of yourself, loving and lovable. And let me remind you that this isn't about anybody other than you. So um, the course is a rather solitary uh, journey in that you're, you're the only one that can change your mind. You're the only one that can see a different world once you change your mind. And you're the only one that can save the world from all of the uh, horrors that have been projected on it. And so um, we come together here as, as students of, of the course and as mighty companions in this um, journey together. And today we're going to look very deeply at um, Jesus and his fundamental teaching, the one that he would most of all have us learn. And um, that lesson is uh, that there is no death, that the resurrection is the truth. And this was his great contribution to those of us who are, are, are lost asleep and dreaming that uh, we are being invited by the teacher of the resurrection to join him in the resurrection. Now the resurrection, as you know, occurs only in the mind. It has nothing to do with the body. Since we aren't bodies, it would be pointless to be pointing out that resurrection would be of a body that doesn't exist. At no instant does the body exist at all. So the re resurrection is solely in the mind and the resurrection is of the mind that um, changes its belief system to um, totally accepting the Holy Spirit as our teacher and guide who leads us from um, this unreal world to what the course refers to as the real world um, the real world is the world that is seen through eyes that have chosen forgiveness as their only function. So it is um, the forgiving mind that sees the real world, which is a stepping stone to the actual uh, uh, stepping out of time and the resurrection of the mind. Um, I'll read you just a couple of statements um, uh, from the section, what is the real world? So if you're new here, you sort of get a general idea about where this is coming from. Uh, the real world cannot be perceived except through eyes forgiveness blesses. And so they see a world where terror is impossible and witnesses to fear cannot be found. In other words, we walk the world in safety. Um, we are not fearful. Uh, we are not uh, defensive because uh, we have accepted that forgiveness is our only function and the, forgive, the for forgiving mind, um, which, Forgiveness in the Course of Miracles is not the same as the traditional forgiveness of um, Christianity. Um, as, as you know, one of Jesus' main reasons for A Course in Miracles is to correct the misunderstanding um, of forgiveness 
and uh, forgiveness in terms of Christian belief is you, you see an er error, you see an attack, you see um, something that is unkind and unloving, you see it, you make it real, and then you let that guy off the hook. In other words, could be a murderer, you see the terrible thing that he did, you make it real in your mind, and then you're gonna be the better person and forgive it. And because the Course is saying the world that we're dreaming is not true, the forgiveness of A Course in Miracles is to accept the Holy Spirit as our teacher. The Holy Spirit doesn't see the error in the first place. So that can take a lot of years and a lot of training to come to the place where we're learning to let go of, of the, the world that we see completely and to accept our holiness as the true identity that we have. So um, the real world and a world of total forgiveness would be the gateway to that. Another one uh, statement about the real world, the real world shows you a world seen differently. It doesn't say the world is different. It's seen differently. It's seen through quiet eyes and with a mind at peace, a mind that rests in God, a mind that knows its holiness and knows its eternal nature, and again, does not make error real. A mind at peace, nothing is there in this mind but rest. So um, some of us may have had the good fortune to be with a, a, a teacher, someone in this world that demonstrates that, that actually demonstrates it's a mind at peace regardless of what the circumstances um, might be uh, in, in what would seem to be exterior. So uh, learning that life is in the mind and only in the mind uh, is, is the outcome of the, the journey with the Course. And a mind that rests in God is at peace and is still regardless of the circumstances. So, you know, we have some great examples of that, but they're few and far between. Uh, some we've talked here about uh, uh, Deschardins in, in the, in the uh, battlefields in World War I in the trenches and writing about the world he saw from that place. And it was a, a place of total uh, peace and beauty. So uh, another one is Nizagadatta, great Eastern guru teacher. And when people asked him, what, what, what can we do? His students would say, what can we do with the world and all the suffering and pain in the world? And he would say, Who, whose world are you talking about? The world I see or the world you see? So there are teachers that are able to actually stand up and say, I see a different world. And um, to see a different world and to walk this world um, is to offer a real alternative. And uh, that's what Jesus is asking us to do, to be here in the world, but not of it, to be here in the world and see uh, from a place of forgiveness and of peace. Uh oh, teacher, teacher, I have a question. Yes. But I forgot yeah. what to I forgot what to ask. Um, no, I'm teasing. <laughs> um, uh, could you talk a little bit about the difference between perception and behavior? How this is a course about perception, and it's not a course about behavior. Yeah, the course is is totally and only about the mind. So um, has nothing to do whatsoever with behavior. Um, be behavior, it would say, would follow. So that if, if I learn that I am as God created, if I learn um, God is but love and so am I, 
if I learn that I am both loving and lovable, then my behavior will be completely appropriate to every and any situation. I will always be coming from loving and lovable. I will always be coming from a place of kindness. And um, only, only I can be the judge of whether I'm coming from a place of kindness or not. I mean, it is possible to be very firm with someone, for example, and be coming from a place of love. So it's not always, you can't always tell by the behavior, but the one who is acting can tell whether they're resting in a place of, of love and being loving and lovable. So a lot of confusion happens with the beginning of, of the course for sure, where um, we try to, to act holy. <laughs> We try to behave wholly, and it's possible to do that and be coming from a place of lack of peace. It's possible to act wholly and be not peaceful internally. So over and over, it has nothing to do with, with our behavior. Behavior does not prove uh, your peace and your holiness, but kindness does. Kindness is always, uh, you know, the bottom line in the course is always said to be, be kind. Just be kind to one another. But um, that, that ultimately will become a natural state of you can't, you really can't. If, I always love Jesus' interpretation of the golden rule. Um, the golden rule is, as you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But he says, in order for uh, your behavior to be appropriate, you have to know who you are and you have to know who your brother is. So you would be looking from your own holiness to the holiness of your brother. You would be com communicating from a place of holiness within yourself to a place of holiness within your brother. and. Um, it, it may be helpful to speak a little bit about uh, holiness in um, the sense, again, of A Course in Miracles. Holiness is, if you think of whole, holiness is an indivisible, unified state of mind. It has nothing to do with um, form at all. But with content, the course makes a distinction between form and content. Um, form would also include behavior. Um, the content of the mind is what the course is about. Is it love? Is it peace? Is it joy? And the only place where we really find that state of mind that has forgiven everything external is in that unified state of mind, um, indivisible, whole, unified. You can think of it as presence. Uh, you can think of it as stillness. You can think of it as beingness. Uh, those, are, those are ways. Um, uh, I, I love the way Muji teaches it. Muji teaches it, don't take shape. Don't take a shape. You don't have a shape. You don't have a form. And as we fall back into that understanding, there's a place of pure beingness and stillness. And it's a state of mind that looks upon the world with forgiveness and doesn't make any of it real. The um, course's description of forgiveness, the one we use the most here at School for a Course in Miracles is forgiveness looks, it watches, it waits, it judges not, and it does nothing. 
See how easy that is. See how simple that is. See how that requires that we do nothing, but simply look and watch and wait, judge not and do nothing and be still. So it's not difficult. The problem is that we really like to judge. <laughs> we really like to think we know something. It's, it's also a place of being willing to empty your mind of everything and know nothing. Because there's, there's no way we can be led by the Holy Spirit. There's no way um, that we can be led um, what is the will of heaven? What is, the, what is God's will for me? We can only ask that question sincerely if we're willing to let go of everything else. Show me your will. And as we, we had a class the other day where we talked a lot about uh, the experience of God's will. God's will um, looks, looks beyond and God's will teaches us what vision sees, looking without judgment, looking from a place of peace. So it takes a uh, great willingness, <laughs> or the course calls it a little willingness, <laughs> but we know at some point it takes great willingness, but the willingness is only for letting go. The willingness, the willingness is to be wrong. The willingness is to say, I'm mistaken. I don't know the meaning of this. I don't know what my brother just did. I, I have no idea what that meant. He looked at me a funny way. I have no idea what that means unless I interpret what I think it means based upon my ego thought system of being separate from my brother. He's over there in that body and I'm over here in this body. No, he's not. He's holy. He rests in God and you're holy. End of story. <laughs> the problem's over. <laughs> Unless you want to have it. I mean, I mean, nobody can keep us from having it, right? We all know that. Nobody can keep me from having a problem that I want to have. I'm the only one that can let go of it, and I'm the only one that can have it. Thank God. Thank God. But we're, you know, we live in a world of perception, and we think it's real. Knowledge is the only thing that's real. And knowledge does not require interpretation. But we, li we live in a dream, a dream of interpretation, where we're making up what everything means, including what we mean. And we, and we all have a, a story about ourselves and who and what we think we are. And we are forever trying to fulfill that story that we have. And we use one another to do it. But that's a whole different story and a whole different uh, a uh, topic for, for a different day. But um, today we're, we're going to talk uh, a little more about um, Jesus, our relationship with Jesus as the voice behind A Course in Miracles, the one who learned that there is no death and the one that is teaching us now that we could leave this world through truth not through death, through learning from him um, the thought system of, the, of what we refer to as the Holy Spirit, the thought system of truth and reality. Um, truth is true. He says, nothing else matters. Nothing else is real. And everything beside it is not even there. So uh, that's, that's pretty all-encompassing. And um, so let's proceed to another place where he talks about belief. 
uh, page 93, the first place he really talks about his resurrection, page 93 in the text. Ninety-three in the text. It's in chapter six. It's in the lessons of love. I'm going to be in paragraph six, and I'm going to start with sentence ten in paragraph six. Remember always that what you believe, you will teach. So he's trying to get us to shift what we believe and teach what's true instead of teach what's not true. So unless we make this shift, we're teaching the unreal, we're teaching what's not true and convincing ourselves that we are as we think we are. We make the shift in the mind, we're learning to teach that love is true and there is nothing else but true, but, but, but love. Uh, very int intro to A Course in Miracles, as, uh, as, as you know. Um, let's see, this course does not aim at teaching the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. It does aim, however, at removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence. That's what takes a while, because ultimately, we are the block to the awareness of love's presence. Love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. The opposite of love is fear, but what is all-encompassing can have no opposite. And that's why fear cannot be mastered by trying to overcome it or wrestle with it. It can be only overcome by us choosing love. Ultimately, we choose love and we forget about fear. So the more you try to wrestle with fear, the more you make it real and the more you're stuck with it. What is all encompassing has no opposite. Love is all encompassing. It has no opposite. God is but love and therefore so am I. So this course can be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing that's real can be threatened. My holiness can never be threatened. That's what's real. I use the body. We use the body to extend love through it and to join with other bodies but we're not identified with the body as being what we are. It's like a telephone. You know, you pick up the telephone and you use it to reach someone else. But you don't make the telephone real and worship the telephone. But the purpose for which you can use it is a holy purpose. So this isn't about denying the body, but it's about changing the purpose for the body. The ego's purpose for the body is attack, pleasure, and pride. The Holy Spirit's purpose for the body is to use it to extend love through the body and to join with, with other, other minds like, like the mind that's, that is holy, to see holiness in, in all things. So nothing that's real can be threatened this communication of love that's being uh, extended through us cannot be threatened. And nothing unreal exists. Everything else is nothing, has no meaning. Herein lies the peace of God. Simple, very, very simple. <laughs> and unequivocal. All right. So back to page 93, remember always that what you believe you will teach. You will demonstrate what you believe about yourself. If, if you can be threatened, you believe you're a body and you can be harmed and hurt and you will 
teach others that they're guilty because they've hurt you. Believe with me, Jesus says, believe with me, and we will become equal as teachers. Paragraph seven, here we go. Your resurrection is your reawakening. I am the model for rebirth, but rebirth itself is merely the dawning on your mind of what is already in it. So the beauty of the course is that you're already there. You already rest in God. You already uh, have joy and peace. You already are eternal. So it's the unlearning of what's standing in the way of that. It's not anything we have to accomplish or acquire or do. We just have to stop interfering with it for it to dawn. I like the idea of dawning so that it will dawn upon us. God placed it there himself. And so it is true forever. You're eternal. You can't die. I believed in it and therefore accepted it as true for me. Help me to teach it to our brothers in the name of the kingdom of God. But first, believe that it is true for you or you will teach amiss. You have to accept that it's true for you. And that's why belief becomes so important here. And we know it can take a while. Helen herself, the scribe of A Course of Miracles, said, I know the Course of Miracles is true. I just don't believe it. So we each have that um, journey to make, each of us, to come to a place where we are willing to accept this is true. I get it and I believe it. And the way I'm going to convince myself it's true is I'm going to teach it. I'm going to demonstrate it. I am going to speak it and I am going to practice it. And I'm going to use Jesus as the model. So let me pause there for a couple minutes. And uh, I know I said a lot um, uh, and, and took a really broad, wide sweep, just in case the... Uh, new uh, folks that are visiting, visiting today um, are not familiar with the thought system of A Course in Miracles. It is radical, radical meaning it's at the very root of our existence and what we believe. So thoughts, questions, shares. Yeah, Judy, Rob. Just a quick one, Lynn. In terms of belief, um, I'm sure you're not going to be surprised I asked this question. Um, belief is experiential. Nest Paul? Belief doesn't um, here, or is it you start there and you, I mean, you have to start from an hypothesis, i.e., resurrection is real for me mm -hmm. and then you have to ask for help to have the experience of resurrection in the mind would you say i i think faith really comes into this picture okay and you know as faith goes to the holy spirit um the faith isn't in ourselves when we start out on this journey. Our faith isn't in ourselves as a body and yeah. as a per person, because yeah. we really don't know anything. But our faith goes to the invisible, unseen teacher within our mind, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit teaches us until we actually believe that spirit is what we are. So, uh, you know, the experience comes, right. but not without the, the link to the Holy Spirit, who's our teacher. That's how I would see it. It's a bit of a leap. It's the, the so-called leap of faith. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you, have to, you have to want to change. 
you know, you have to see the folly of our existence uh, and and the, the the world we've made, and that it never changes. It's it's never going to change. The only thing they can change is the the one that's looking at it. So, um, um, yeah, to, to convince ourselves we need the Holy Spirit, the miracle is actually what shows us that we're learning from that unseen, unheard, invisible teacher. Like, all of a sudden, it's like, holy cow, there really is something else. And I'm you know, starting to really believe it. <laughs> it's a it's a holy instant of resur instant of resurrection, isn't it? Or a precursor. Sure. Okay. It's a, a moment of leaving the body and stepping out of time. Absolutely. Stepping out of time and into eternity. Again, the Holy Spirit is the teacher of the eternal. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. I was thinking there's there's like well, more than at least a couple of things going on with this faith thing. So in many places, Jesus says the way we learn to believe something is we offer the possibility that our brothers are still holy to them. And in that in that experience of offering it to them, we learn, we wake up, we begin to believe it's true about us, too. So but here he's making it sound like, well, you got to believe that first before you can offer it to your brother. I mean, but, but I mean, in at least a zillion other places, he says almost, at least in terms of words, the exact opposite. And so, and then this whole, I mean, faith is such a loaded word in terms of history and tradition and Christianity. And, and, and I bristled with looking at what faith means in the 12 step recovery process that I was part of, what faith means in here, the way he, he kind of just drops it in there like, I know what he's talking about. And, and I remember Whitney talking about this too. Like, like how, how do I define faith? Like, especially in respect to the course, what does that look like? What does it mean when he says, I have to believe first before I can, or I'm going to teach a myth? And, and I, you know, like the way I've been able to sit with that and be okay with it, it, it's my willingness to check it out. My willingness to try it. Right. That's, and that's the first part of faith for me is, is I'm willing to trust another teacher, believe in another teacher, listen to, the, listen to the course, listen to Jesus, listen to the Holy Spirit. It's a willingness to check it out. It's, it seems like it starts with that. It's the what if that Dave Dempsey was talking about the other day in class. What, what, if, right. what if I could choose another teacher? What if I could believe in something else? Would I be open to that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Th thanks, Tim. I, uh, what you were saying reminded me of a ver the very, very first page of the teacher's manual, where um, he says, um, let me see, I'm in paragraph three. It's just going to be a couple of sentences, so you don't need to go there. Um, it is the teaching underlying what you say that teaches you teaching, but reinforces what you believe about yourself. Its fundamental purpose is to diminish self-doubt. So, you know, the belief in ourselves, we're, we're going from the belief that we're a body and that our interpretations are true and that we really know a lot about everything to a place of what I'm believing about myself is that I'm holy and that I have an invisible teacher that knows the truth and, and that I can learn from this teacher uh, how to see my brother. I can learn from this teacher um, to um, let go of my interpretations and ask my teacher to show me uh, who my brother really is. And, and so we're, we're learning actually that ultimately we are the Holy Spirit. Ultimately we are this invisible holiness that rests within God and is not separated from God in any way. Um, but we can't do that on our own initially. Um, 
So we do have to change, however, what we want to believe about ourselves. And um, as, as, as long as we um, desire um, uh, to believe in our separation and our personhood is another word for it, um, we won't let the Holy Spirit replace the thought system. <laughs> So I, I wrote this little quote down, no one allows a purpose to be replaced while he desires it. For nothing is so cherished and protected as a goal the mind accepts. So the, the goal that my mind is accepted when I start with the course is that I wanna be, a, I'm a body, I wanna be successful, I wanna be a winner, I want to get my own way, you know, I want to be free in my terms, you know, I want to be vacation and travel and buy all the things I want, and, you know, I, I mean, it's all about me, 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 me. <laughs> and then it's about my family. And then it's about my team and my country and my everything. We're completely identified in our personhood. And somewhere we see, you know, this has brought me nothing but suffering and pain and misery. Yes, now and then I have moments of happiness when I get my way, when I get what I want, when I win. But ultimately we begin to realize that we want to experience that my brother and I are the same one that we're joined. There's no need to be afraid of one another. We both rest in God. And that's true for all of us. And, and we begin to experience the joy of that, the, the wonderful joy of, of being in relationships that we're not trying to get anything from one another. I mean, who here doesn't know the misery of trying to get your happiness from somebody else, right? Anybody claim they've found total happiness in, in their relationship with someone else? No. With my dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dog and my cat. They don't fight back. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we know it's a tall order, but... Um, we want it. <laughs> Steven. 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 I, I Steven. Uh, yeah. Uh, the thing, thing I really like about this course, I mean, love about this, what really jumps out for me and, and what you said today is uh, it's so radical. You, you know, it tells me right up front, we're all insane. It tells me right up front, I don't know what's going on and I really don't understand anything and none of this is real and it's all just a dream. That's, that's really radical. Uh, but for you know, for the heart of what we're talking about is is, is this faith and, and belief and, and all that. I have to have hope. I have to have um, I I have to have evidence. And uh, without that, uh, I'm not sure. I've always known something was drastically wrong with this place. Uh, I mean, you know, look at what people do to one another. I mean, where am I from? What what were some of the answers? Well, you know, I found I found that in here, um, and and I, I found it in a place like this. I I, I love this part. Uh, the holy the Holy Spirit is invisible, but you can see the results of His presence, and through them, you will learn that He is there. Cool, I liked hearing that, you know. And then uh, then then uh, uh, Tim said one day he. You know, he leaned into the camera a little bit uh, and, and he said, Jesus says right here, you will see me. And I didn't know that. I sure didn't believe it. Well, a couple months later, it happened to me. And then a couple months later than that, it happened again. I can't explain it. There was no voice. Uh, the light seemed to go up a little bit, but it wasn't like that. I just knew he was there. And I talked to him. Hey, how you doing? I, what do you? Hey, how, you know, I was like so flabbergasted you know it only lasted a few seconds and it was in this point in my life when uh, everything was really horrible but i didn't care i was at peace and it was kind of like he was saying 
there you go. Now you're doing it right. Yeah, you know, and, and so I just wanted to say, for me, faith, I got to have hope and I have to have evidence. And, and I've got it. And I've got a lot of stories about that. But it doesn't matter because I really can't explain. It's, you know, inexplicable and, uh, and faith and belief, you know, read the course and then read it again and then read it again. You know, five, 10 years later, you might, might get uh, what's happening. And maybe you won't. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Oris. Hi, Oris. Hi. You know, as we say, what is faith? What I want, as I ask myself, what is faith? It, it used to mean getting together all these thoughts in my head, you know, and somehow working it out and, and believing in it or whatever. And the more I learn, or the more we study, the more together, uh, the more I realize that for me, it means just letting it all go, not trying to think about it all, just letting everything go and realizing, I, re I, mean, I mean, honestly realizing at my age, I don't know a thing. And that's the hardest part is to say, I really don't have the answers. And then when I remember, you know, just to turn it all over, there is hope, there is peace. Yeah. And that's what's worth, that's worth it for me. Amen to that. Yes. Thanks, Aris. Uh, Kathy Jones. Oh, I thought I saw your hand. Anybody else? Patty. Patty's got yes, Patty. Hi, thanks. This is really beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I love the radicalness. Um, but then it's also a reality of right now. And, you know, it kind of seems like there's such a separation between um, holiness and then ego. And then you had those lists of, you know, one is loving and um, or so forth. And the ego is all attack, pleasure and pride. And I'm just saying, but when we're in our body, even if, it's, you know, our mind is eternal, our body is not um, the pleasure piece. It sounded like you were kind of putting it down to have vacations or, you know, um, happy family, you know, really working on that and relationships and so forth. That's where it gets kind of like, and I know that ultimately it's just me and me and my um, holiness and relationship. But in the meanwhile, there's nothing wrong with a pleasure, like seeing movies and um, enjoying life and staying healthy and enjoying things, right? Right. Uh, Right. Yeah, uh, right. That is, uh, and it's important to have healthy communication and relationships and so forth. And that's something that's right there in, our, in the presence, right? That needs kind of showing where there's fear and ego. Yeah, the, the, the course wouldn't uh, ever have us change behavior deliberately. It would let our behavior change as a result of us finding peace and joy and happiness within ourselves. And so it is a huge shift for the ego to make a shift from getting to giving. Like I receive what I give, I don't receive what I get. So it's, a, right. you know, a change in the way we communicate with one another. And it's going through our day and all of our relationships are our classrooms. They're all ways in which we learn. And we learn if, if we're uncomfortable or, or, or feeling deprived or lacking, the other, somebody else isn't responsible for that. It's internal with me and that I would ask again, I would bring my neediness to the Holy Spirit and say, you know, I'm willing to let go of my imagined neediness because the truth is I really have everything. And so the Holy Spirit's job is to co help me correct and see past my neediness and to realize that I do have everything. So again, it's not trying to manipulate and control one another, which is standard behavior for the ego. Um, negotiation is another standard way of the ego. 
but to always be working internally with the Holy Spirit and learning that we're complete doesn't mean we don't talk about things. And we might share, hey, you know, I had this moment when I thought you were depriving me of my peace. And, you know, I, I brought that feeling of deprivation to the Holy Spirit. And I realized that, you know, I was believing that I was lacking. And hey, I want to tell you what happened. You know, you know, I, I, I discovered something wonderful and new about myself. You know, that would be a good way to share that, you know. So it's always reusing the relationship as a classroom in which we look within ourselves and make the changes internally. And then we can share what we're learning, which is, you know, wonderful opportunity. I don't know, anybody else here want to weigh in on that? Because uh, a lot of practice practitioners here. Jesus, Jesus just told me that he really likes Aruba. So whenever you go to Aruba, <laughs> make sure you take him along with you. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. Well, sort of not really. But <laughs> so, so the, you know, the idea is like, in, in, everything's a classroom. The food store, driving, on the job, going on vacation with my family. They're all classrooms. And am I, am I willing to see everybody in each of those situations without judgment? First, I have to realize how much I am judging and then asking for help from that voice of love internally to see, to let that go, to let go of all those judgments I have about my family, I have about the people that are running the vacation, the hotel, the, the job, the traffic, the people that are driving, et cetera. I mean, they're all just classrooms for realizing initially how much I do judge, and then am I willing to ask for help to let those judgments go? Like Orise was saying, I think I, that's what every judgment says, I know. I know what you're doing wrong. <laughs> I know how you just cut me off in traffic. I know what you should have done on this vacation that you didn't do, whatever it is. I think I know. The other thing that hit me about this section was, uh, you wonder how much, I, I, I think I'll ask Helen to see what happens, but I, I, like when, when Jesus uses the word teach, did she understand at that point, teaching did not mean behavior? Like, you, you, you will teach this to your brothers. I have a sense that she understood that part. The faith part, I'm not quite so sure about. But, the, you know, when, she, when Jesus starts using all these words, he redefines them all. And I'm just wondering how much, like I would like to ask Helen, at this point, when you took this down, did you know what he meant by teach? Did you, did you know what he meant when he was talking about faith? Or what was your understanding of faith at that point? I mean, can you imagine taking this stuff down and trying to figure it out what the hell he's talking about? <laughs> Jeez, <priest. laughs> well, I, I think um, in the course to teach in, in the, that first page of the manual for teachers where he talks about teaching, he says to teach is to demonstrate. It, it's, what I'm doing right now is, is not teaching. I mean, in the world sense, it's teaching. But in, in truth, what teaches is the state of our mind is what teaches. The demonstration of whether we're peaceful and joyful and, and happy is really the ultimate teach, the way to teach. And not necessarily our words can match with that, but we can also be saying the words and our demonstration doesn't match with that. So, it's uh, really what's underneath what we're saying that's teaching. I hope that makes uh, sense. Well, David, David. Could you, uh, speak a little more to what Patty was referring to about entertaining ourselves. Here's Chris sitting in a car waiting to go play golf when this is over. Is that okay? <laughs> Oh, Chris, you're going golfing after this? I, I was just kidding. I'm actually <laughs> sitting at I'm actually sitting at the city dump, and I'm going to go through everything after this, <laughs> looking oh, okay. for golf balls. No, oh. I'm at the, I am at the golf course. Yes. Okay. No, again, it's who who are we doing it with? Who goes with you? Is the the statement? Are you walking with 
peace? Are you walking with the Holy Spirit? Are you golfing and in a state of peace with Jesus or the Holy Spirit? Or are you on your own as an ego and uh, wanting to win, you know? Nothing wrong with even wanting to win, but you know, the, 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 the winning is not taken personally. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but not to take either of those personally because there's no person to do that. <laughs> Being in the world, but not of it. Yeah. And that's for pleasure and pain. Yeah. You know, the same, yeah. that same radical. Yeah, love. exactly. You know, yeah, we all at times have pain in our body, but we don't have to take that personally and identify with the pain as I am pain. Um, we don't identify with pleasure either. Yes, there are moments that are, you know, joyous and wonderful, but we don't possess it like it's mine. <laughs> and I'm somehow better and different from you because I have this. It, it comes and goes like everything. In the dream, everything comes and goes. Yeah. Lynn Altman. Hi. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about the lesson today or the first part of it. Um, I will step back and let him lead the way. And um, I had a, a different experience with that this morning um, in that uh, usually what I'm trying to do is think about how I can best be an example of the teaching that I'm trying to learn. But, but what I heard in the lesson today was that what I, that's based on my interpretation of what I think is going on with me and with whoever I'm with. And letting him lead the way means really letting that um, inner teacher interpret for me what's going on with me and what's going on around me so that I'm coming from, from that place of holiness, which has nothing to do with what I think. So in terms of whether it's pleasure or, pain, or reacting to pain or you know, just doing my daily job or cleaning my house or whatever it is, it's like, what is what am I thinking that this is about for me? Is this, is this my punishment? Is this a chore? Is this gonna delight me? Is, those are all my thoughts about what a particular situation means. And the minute I'm in that space, I'm bound for failure and disappointment and, and great grief. And I, I mean, I just like how wonderful it would be to just stop trying to figure everything out. You know, I, I thought fear was my thing. And then I discovered, oh, it's really anger. Well, what the hell difference does it make? The only thing that matters is that I listen to Jesus tell me that I'm the son of God, I'm love, just as God is. And then from there, I move out. And he will show me how, if I just let him. He will show me. So thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Lynn. Nice. Really nice. All right. Let's um, go to the review. Uh, we're going to start out... Um, a little more on the resurrection. So go to page 329, which is actually the uh, second page of review number five in the workbook. Um, paragraph six on page 330. Paragraph six on page 330. And this is, uh, again, Jesus speaking to us. I take the journey with you. So if we include him, he says, I'm there. I'm there in your right mind. I'm always there in your right mind. So I take the journey with you. For I share your doubts and fears a little while that you may come to me who recognize the road by which all fears 
and doubts are overcome. We walk together. I must understand uncertainty and pain, although I know they have no meaning. It's like what Lynn was saying, you know, to know who walks with us and who can help us look at the things that we're telling ourselves, <laughs> the story we tell ourselves throughout our day, we usually have a story going on about ourselves. And I'm, I'm walking with you and I understand, but I know they don't mean anything. Yet a savior must remain with those he teaches, seeing what they see, but still retaining in his mind the way that led him out. And now will lead you out with him. God's son is crucified until you walk along the road with me. In other words, he's saying until you join me in this thought system uh, that ultimately is teaching you that there is no death, um, that ultimately is, is inviting you to join me in the resurrection of your mind, um, that until that point, you're still believing in crucifixion. Many places in the Course, he said, every moment you're choosing between crucifixion and resurrection, but you don't know it. You're choosing between life and death. And there are some places where he'll, he'll even say, um, a sigh is a sign that you believe in death. You know, any kind of complaint, any, any um, belief in being threatened or needing to defend yourself, these are all saying, I can be crucified, that crucifixion is alive and well. So he's trying to lead us out of that kind of thinking to the resurrection. And then, Paragraph seven, um, let me see here. Um, who's got a, a, a book handy uh, and can read that while I take a moment? Judy, Rob, have you got your book right there? Yep. Can you read paragraph seven, please? Sure. My resurrection comes each time I lead a brother safely to the place at which the journey ends and is for God. I am renewed each time a brother learns there is a way from misery and pain. I am reborn each time a brother's mind turns to the light in him and looks for me. I have forgotten no one. Help me now to lead you back to where the journey was begun to make another choice with me. Any comment, Judy? Other, other than hearing the word I am um, throughout the paragraph, which means, you know, which is, you know, the being, the reality of it. Yeah. That's, that lifts above the page. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Judy. Um, let me see. Um, Kathy Kosen, can you read paragraph eight? Do you have your book? Yeah, mm -hmm, great. Thank you. Paragraph eight. Release me as you practice once again the thoughts I brought to you from him who sees your bitter need and knows the answer God has given him. Together we review these thoughts. Together we devote our time and effort to them. And together we will teach them to our brothers. God would not have heaven incomplete. It waits for you as I do. I am incomplete without your part in me. And as I am made whole, we go together to our ancient home, prepared for us before time was and kept unchanged by time, immaculate and safe, as it will be at last when time is done. Wow, <laughs> pretty beautiful. 
this class has been really good for me. Tim was going to get an earful on Friday, but a lot has come together during this hour. I lately I've been thinking, I'm tired of studying, I'm tired of studying, I'm tired of reading, I'm tired of studying. Because I thought for a while there, this last couple of weeks, I thought that was the only way I was going to get this. But I, I, then I fi it finally reawakened in me. I knew it, but it reawakened in me that no, I need to do nothing. I already, I have, I already have what I am. I already have what I yeah. do. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You notice in that paragraph how many times he used the word together, mm -hmm. together, together, together. And obviously, he's not speaking of himself there as a person or as a body. He's speaking as, as the Christ and that we are all you know, together in Christ. We are all one, one in Christ rather than you know, as, mm -hmm. as, as the body. So yeah, thanks, Kathy. I was um, thinking about that experience of uh, when I'm like, like, so I choose to do things I'd like to do and they sort of, I think they make me feel good. But so what does that mean when I, I include Jesus in it? You know, like, like this, like that whole paragraph seven, he's renewed, he's, re, you know, um, re, redeemed himself. Um, yeah, he feels this incredible lightning. Um, and, and, and I know he means we do it together. Like we, we experience that together, that sense of, myself is his self and his self is myself. And so what makes any, any experience just not that I like it or I don't like it, what makes it exquisite, I like that word lately, but what makes the experience exquisite is when I pull all the judgments out of it and I'm not using that situation, like I go buy ice cream. Of course, I'm gonna, if I'm gonna buy ice cream, I'll probably buy chocolate instead of vanilla, but I don't have to judge you because you bought vanilla. Or I, and I don't have to judge the person who gives me the ice cream because they didn't give me enough. You know, I mean, if I'm doing any of those activities with ego, whether I'm at work or I'm just at a ice cream store, if I'm doing that with ego, ego, there will be judgments involved. And I'll pretend I'm just being normal. No, it's either the ego or the Holy Spirit. I, so I can move from an experience where I'm going to enjoy my ice cream to oh, I could enjoy my ice cream without having to judge the hell out of everybody in this situation. <laughs> That's what makes it exquisite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think another uh, way of, of, of looking, looking at, you know, as we go through our day, because that's, that's the real question. That's where the rubber meets the road. You know, what's my day like as I go through my day? And, um, you know, I think uh, the one of the questions that I, that I ask when I remember is, "What's it for? What is this for?" Without answering it myself, you know, what is this for? What is the purpose of of this? And then let that sort of be revealed without my using my past learning, you know, about what it's for. Like Lynn was saying, um, Lynn Altman said, I think I heard you right, Lynn, where you go through your day kind of watching your mind, your train of thought and what, what you're thinking about as you're going through your day. And so you're using it as a, a mind watching, which is a, a great exercise, you know. I don't know when I try to do that, I can only sustain it for a short amount of time, you know, and then I'm off, I'm off again and I have to bring it back and, and you know, pay attention to what I'm thinking again. But mind watching is, is a good one too, of, you know, what's going on in my mind as I'm doing this activity, you know, bringing, bringing my unholy, unloving, unkind thoughts to the Holy Spirit would be another, another way. Um, yeah, and there's nothing wrong with enjoying a good ice cream cup or a movie or a play or any of that, you know, it's just uh, watching the habitual mind thinking that we use to separate 
from one another while we're doing it. Yeah, Abe, I, I, you had come in. You know, uh, the last two or three paragraphs, uh, reviewing the idea that, uh, you know, joining with Jesus is good for me. But what also comes through is that joining with Jesus is good for Jesus. It actually completes it. I, that really is an eye opener because sometimes I don't feel worthy of being helped by Jesus. But when I, when I have a sense that I'm helping him, now everything changes all of a sudden. Yeah. You know, thanks for bringing that up, Abe. Um, we, we speak about it off and on here in our class that, you know, we are part of his mission. His mission isn't complete. I mean, he accomplished his specific part, which was, you know, the resurrection. That part he completed for us so that, you know, he can say unequivocally, there is no death. And I'm here to teach you that. But to carry out his plan of atonement or the correction, he says, I need you. I need you to do this, to join me and, and to do this for me. In fact, he's going to talk to us about it here in the next paragraph, I think. Abe, would you like to read um, paragraph nine, please? Let's see. Let this review be then your gift to me. For this alone I need, that you will hear the words I speak and give them to the world. You are my voice, my eyes, my feet, my hands through which I save the world. The self from which I call to you is but your own. To him we go together. Take your brother's hand, for this is not a way we walk alone. In him I walk with you and you with me. Our father wills his son be one with him. What lives but must not then be one with you. Yeah, I mean, he makes it really clear there. And, you know, he's, he's literally giving us a way to live our lives that has true meaning, that, that is filled with purpose. And what a, what a blessing it is to carry that, that with us and, and know, you know, why we're here and what it's for and uh, can really stand for an alternative way of going through this, this world, in, in the world, as we were saying, but not of, of it. Um, Right. Oh, he's reflecting on that, 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 you know, in chapter 23, that where he, he very, not very subtly says the choice isn't just between love and fear or love and peace. The choice is between, um, or uh, is between love and, and murder. And I was thinking of that when, when Lynn Altman was talking about her trip. I, I hope your trip to the swimming pool yesterday was much nicer than that trip the other day, where she basically she killed everybody in the pool. <laughs> I mean, she's smiling. She's nice. She doesn't look like a serial killer, but she killed everybody in the pool the other day when she, you know, like, this is wrong with this one. This, I, and, and we all do that. I mean, if we're in ego mode, we got to say, this is what's wrong here. This is what's wrong here. This is what's wrong here. I mean, it's love or murder. <laughs> I mean, not in form, thank God. <laughs> we wouldn't last very long on the planet. But I mean, certainly in terms of what we're thinking, it's not nice stuff. And, and so why wouldn't, once I realize that it's love or murder, then I'm much more inclined to let that go and ask for help to see everybody in the pool, <laughs> every, every pool I'm in, <laughs> a different way. All right, I uh, realize we're going a little bit over on time. Um, so I think um, we'll close together with the, the beautiful um, uh, prayer. It's on page 329. Uh, and take a few minutes together just to, to um, you know, ask ourselves, what, what do we want? And um, 
to real, realize all that is being held out to us here as a possibility that um, we might want to consider. He said our, our goal would be at the end of this review of 10 lessons of God is but love and therefore so am I, that we would come to um, uh, the realization that this statement is true after we do the 10, 10 lessons, that it is true, God is but love and so am I. So um, I'll read the prayer um, on page 329. We'll take a couple of minutes together to um, marinate in it and then uh, end our class. Steady our feet, our Father. Let our doubts be quiet and our holy minds be still and speak to us. We have no words to give to you. We would but listen to your word and make it ours. Lead our practicing as doth a father lead a little child along the way he does not understand, yet does he follow, sure that he is safe because his father leads the way for him. And so do we bring our practicing to you. If we stumble, you will raise us up. If we forget the way, we count upon your sure remembering. We wander off, but you will not forget to call us back. Quicken our footsteps now that we may walk more certainly and quickly unto you. And we accept the word you offer us to unify our practicing as we review these thoughts that you have given us. God is but love and therefore so am I. This self alone knows love. This self alone is perfectly consistent in its thoughts, knows its creator, understands itself, is perfect in its knowledge and its love, and never changes from its constant state of union with its father and itself. And it is this that waits to meet us at the journey's ending. Every step we take brings us a little nearer. Let us raise our hearts from dust to life as we remember this is promised us and that this course was sent to open up the path of light to each of us and to teach us step by step how to return to the eternal self we thought we lost. God is but love and therefore so am I.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for sharing this with, with one another. Be blessed. Thank you, Lynn. God Thank you, Lynn. 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 Thank you, Tim. Thanks, everybody. Peace and love. Beautiful way to start my day. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye.